Here are my 10 tips on how to learn Python. Make this year, make 2020, the year that you learn Python. Tip number one, it's not too late. And the reason I'm putting this first is I get so many questions. I would say the, the largest number of questions I get are from people who want to learn and who think they've left it too late. They're somehow too old. And it doesn't really matter what age they are. They could be 25 or in their 30s or 40s or 50s or even in their 60s. I've had emails from all age ranges asking me this question. And the answer is it, you're never too old to learn. It's a fantastic skill to have. It's a superpower. It will change your life. And uh, it doesn't matter. Age is unimportant. Just go ahead and learn it. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb, isn't there? And it goes something along the lines of, when's the best time to plant a tree? And the answer is the best time to plant a tree is 15 years ago, but the second best time to plant a tree is now. So just get started now. Don't worry about, you, you know, thinking whether you're too old or not. If you learn it and learn it well, age will not make a difference. I absolutely promise you that. The second tip I want to give you is that you are not learning Python. Now, I know that sounds a bit strange, but, and of course you are learning it in a way, but what I mean by that is that the difficult skill to acquire isn't Python itself. It's something called computational thinking. Now, I could make a whole video on computational thinking, and um, if it's something that you'd like to you know, find out a little bit more about, I would suggest you search online for Jeanette Wing and uh, her writings or her articles on computational thinking, because she explains it really well. But computational thinking is the ability to be able to decide whether a, uh, a problem can be solved by a computer, and if it can be solved by a computer, to work out the best way of solving it, the most optimal way of solving it, and to take bigger problems and break them down into smaller uh, problems so that you can then use a programming language uh, to translate that problem into something that a computer can understand and solve. And that is the skill, and that's what you're learning. And that's why people that have already learned how to program in a different language will pick up new languages really quite easily because that is the skill that they've developed. In a way, the language is less important. Now, Python is a great language to learn because the syntax is quite easy. But when it comes to it, really, you're not learning a syntax. You have to know the syntax, but that's not the challenge. The challenge is learning to think computationally, and it's a really important skill. And it's something that is being applied to more and more fields um, with great success. Uh, so that's something that if you can master that skill will stay with you, you know, in lots of different uh, endeavors that you have. Uh, and it's really worth acquiring. But of course, it's a difficult skill to acquire because, you know, it's, it's a whole new way of thinking uh, and it will take some time. So don't be disappointed if it takes you a while to master this, but master it, you surely will. Tip number three is find a learning resource and stick with it. Don't get distracted. So take a little time to find the learning resource that you think suits your style of learning. And incidentally, I have a video course on Udemy that uh, you might find interesting. It might work for you. If it doesn't, that's no problem. Find your own one. But the link to my Udemy course is in the description below. Check it out and see what you think. Um, but find a resource that works for you and then stick with it because it's very easy, you know, learning to program, learning Python, learning computational thinking is very challenging. It's not an easy thing to do. And because it's challenging, it becomes quite easy to think that the reason you're not learning as quickly as you hoped you would is because somehow the learning resource that you have isn't good enough. When in actual fact, you're just not sticking at it long enough. So you become distracted by trying to find other learning materials, and that takes you off the track of actually achieving what you want to achieve, which is learning how to program in Python. So find one or two resources and stick with them. Tip number four is that you can learn all of this stuff for free. So yes, there are numerous books and courses that you can pay for to learn Python, but there's a lot of material online that's free as well. So don't forget to look at that. And the best place to start really is the Python official documentation. Um, so go and check that out too. My tip number five would be don't spend too long learning the basics. 
because this is something that's new to you um, and you know is a difficult skill to acquire you might feel that you need to spend longer than you actually do you know working on what variables are and loops and if statements um, and what you really need to do is to move away from those basics and to work on problems and you know work on projects of your own and solving little problems that you might be able to find by searching online that's what you need to move on to quite quickly so avoid the temptation to keep going over the basics because the best way of really understanding the basics is to you know read up on them and then put them into practice <laughs> Tip number six, if you're really serious about learning Python and learning to program and uh, you know, you're thinking that you might want to get a job doing it, then it's really important that you learn data structures and algorithms. Uh, they won't mean too much to you at the moment, um, but make sure they're on your list and you know uh, how to use them and what they are. Tip number seven, which is very closely related to tip number six, is to find problems and projects that require you to use data structures and algorithms. And it's really important that you understand these. Um, there are websites uh, like LeetCode, um, that's very good for practicing problems and a lot of those problems will require some knowledge of various different algorithms and data structures. Uh, so make sure that you've solved lots and lots of problems that um, help you to understand how to use data structures and algorithms uh, and when to use them and what sort of problems particular data structures and particular algorithms are good at solving. <laughs> Tip number eight is to make sure you know how to use object-oriented programming in Python. And it's quite easy, really, because everything in Python is an object, so um, you will have a good basis of understanding what it is, even if you haven't explicitly been using it. Um, you know, and you know the difference between a class and an object, and you can create your own classes from which to create your own objects, and that kind of thing. And just practice and practice object-oriented programming. <laughs> Tip number nine is to create and write a blog that uh, keeps a record of your learning experience with Python. Projects that you've worked on, um, areas of programming in Python you found particularly challenging. Um, and it's a really good way of learning because one thing that you should do is explain certain concepts uh, in programming in Python uh, you know, that you think would be helpful to an audience uh, that wanted to learn those concepts themselves. And when you explain something, it really does help you to make sure that you've understood it yourself. Uh, and the more you explain things, the better you tend to understand them. And so it's a good discipline uh, to write a blog in order to develop your understanding of the subjects that you cover in that blog. But also, from a technical point of view as well, if you write a blog that's based on Python, um, that uses a Django framework, for example, you'll learn all of the aspects of creating a website and developing your own web apps that that might involve uh, and that would be a very useful project as well uh, and it's also very uh, it makes you very visible as far as uh, employers are concerned or potential employers you know if they've been following your blog or if you can show them a blog that you've been keeping for six months or so it shows them that you're serious and that you know what you're doing and you know what you're talking about <laughs> Tip number 10, and I think this is really important as well, um, particularly if you're looking to try to get employment uh, as a programmer or a developer uh, using Python, and that is to make sure you know how to use Git and GitHub. It's also a very good way of sharing you know, what you've done, sharing the code that you've written, again, so potential employers can see that. Um, but it's a really important skill. Version control um, is a really uh, important part of the software development process. And if you're going to be looking for a job in this field, it's something that potential employers will expect you to be able to do. So learn Git and GitHub. And those are my top 10 tips. The other important thing is make sure that you practice every single day. So you need to make sure that you do some coding and you learn something new every single day. Don't let a day go past when you don't learn something new or at least put uh, something that you've learned into practice. Do a problem, learn a new concept, but make sure you do some coding every single day. Oh, and I almost forgot one other skill that you need to develop as well, um, and it's pretty obvious really, 
but is finding out how to solve problems that you can't solve initially. So when you've reached you know, the point where you can't solve a problem and you just don't know how to proceed any further, you need to be quite good at knowing how to search for ways of solving it and you know, using Google um, a lot in order to be able to find similar problems or concepts that will help you to solve the problem that you're facing right now. Uh, and you know, that's a really useful skill. And again, it's a skill that employers would expect you to have. Good luck and enjoy learning Python. Now I'm going to try to get down this hill.